Hey everyone, it's Tyler Michelle Stroy from Universal Rackets, and today we're going to be going over the number one reason why players miss taking the ball out of the air up in the kitchen. Once again, if you stay tuned for this whole video, you're going to be learning the top reason why you miss taking the balls out of the air in the kitchen and how to fix it. Now Michelle, why do you want to take the balls out of the air instead of letting the ball bounce up in the kitchen? Someone once told me that time is currency in pickleball. So if you're able to take time away from your opponent, you're more likely to win the point. So when you take the ball out of the air, you're taking time away from them to return the ball. And the second reason why is if you let the ball bounce, it forces you to hit up over the net. The only thing you can do is hit a neutral or defensive ball. If you can take the ball out of the air, that means you're going to take it at a higher point and you at either A, can neutralize it, or B, hit down on the ball and hit an offensive shot. So again, a lot of players, they let the ball bounce, and what happens? They get up. If you lean over and take it out of air, you can be more offensive and hit at or above net height. Now, will you also teach everyone how to know when to take the ball out of the air? Because that's like the biggest conundrum that happens on court, is how do you know when to do it? And I feel like this is the most used uh, teaching drill technique that uh, all coaches use on social media online, as they say. Well, what you want to do is you want to visualize an imaginary line about one or two feet in the kitchen line, right here. Yeah. And taking a ball, if the ball bounces over here, you're going to take it out of the air. If a ball bounces beyond this line, you're going to let it bounce. And what that means essentially is you want to lean over the kitchen line. You want to use all of your length. What separates a beginner from, let's say, more of an advanced beginner intermediate player is that the beginners, they just think they can only hit a ball out of the air when it's close to them. As you advance in pickleball, you're realizing that you can hit the ball out of the air when you lean to it. So again, more advanced players go to the ball, more beginner players let the ball come to them. And you know what's so interesting? You said like every coach in the whole pickleball world uses the same drill to say, oh, well, if the ball is here, like exactly what you just said. For me though, my brain doesn't work that way. So maybe someone else that's watching this is kind of similar to me. Like last night I was playing, and last night I was playing against a really powerful player, and I can promise you, in my mind, it wasn't, if the ball bounces here, take it out of the air. You know what I just continually said? When I am playing against her, I will not move my feet off of that kitchen. So for me, it's not about really getting aggressive and attacking balls that I can out of the air, like more into the kitchen. It's first of all, just not taking a step off of the kitchen. Because I'm stepping off, I can't even think about taking a ball in here if I'm already backing off of it because of like my like intimidation is the word. And for me personally, what I what I say is I don't visualize this line. I do train with that sometimes, but we do. Yeah. What do I say is I just want to hit every ball as early as possible. Right, and you can't hit it early if you're already off of it. So you want to use both together. But there's different steps that come up to take the ball out of the air in the yes. right way. So great to have you back in these videos, babe. Um, your you different much. opinions uh, are very valued, at least to myself. So again, let's show them what not to do and what the number one reason. And I can promise you that we've all been there, and when you pop that ball up, there's nothing worse because you're setting yourself or your partner up to death. Do you want to show them, or should I? You can show them. Okay, so here's what happens, okay? So they're here, they're waiting, and what happens is, is either A, they take a step back prior to This contact. is what I'm talking about. So this is where many beginners go wrong. So again, they're here, and they go like this. By moving back, the only place that I can hit the ball is up in the air. Once again, so here we are. Again, I say high, and I go back. Because the first thing in pickleball that you learn is ding, 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 ding. You want to ding, you want to ding. But then you have to learn how to take the ball out of the air on the kitchen. So instead of moving back, you stay at the kitchen line and take it out of the air. Again, you never want to move back except when someone has a ball high up in the air and they're going to absolutely annihilate it. Okay? Now, the next reason why players go wrong is because they're making contact, they're up the kitchen, but watch what happens. They're moving while they're vowing. So again, they're here, they're staying, but then they're moving while they're vowing. You need to make sure that not only, step number one, priority number one is to what? Not move back off the kitchen, okay? Priority number two is to make sure all your body weight is going forward, is down and forward. So a great way to ensure that is instead of standing up straight like a tin soldier, you're going to have uh, your feet and hips width distance apart and you're going to get low on your legs. Once I'm done, again, I'm always going to be forward every single time. My body's going to be going forward. Notice, all my momentum, again, is going forward. And that first ball that you just took out of the air was super low. Because he was moving forward, he made the commitment to not move back. It still was a great shot back. And the second
second thing as well is by dropping your center of gravity and getting into your legs, it's going to allow you to get under the ball. So by dropping my legs, I'm able to get below the ball and hit up over in that. Now that's more of an advanced tactic, but basically the lower you get, the more luck that you have, I would say. Yeah, and, and also let's just remember too, this is just a little ball. We could squish this in our hands if we want to. It's really not that scary. Yes, people do have power, you have the ball, you can pass you, but you're more likely to do better and stay protected if you actually commit to stop being afraid of this ball hitting you. Yeah. The more you put yourself like a wall at this pitch of mine, the safer you're actually going to be. Because if you pop that ball up, it's coming right back at your face, more likely. I'm more worried about my partner smashing their paddle at me. Like that one guy we know, he got a concussion because his partner had an overhead. He went down, I think hit him in the head, right? Yeah. But uh, instead of that, I'm more worried of that than a ball actually coming right at me. And where players go wrong and where they get the ball at them or they feel like they are afraid of the balls is because they're not in the proper ready position. And that's the next thing that I want to go over. You have to make sure that you are in the proper ready position. Now, many players, they have their paddle down when they're starting. They'll dink and they'll stop here. Think, pickleball, what is time again? You said time currency. is the currency, right? In pickleball, you don't have a lot of time. It's so short. So where players go is they'll go here, they'll have their hands down, the ball comes at them really fast because they speed them up. It takes so long to get from here to here, you're not going to make it in time you're going to get hit. So right. number one, you always want to make sure that you keep your paddle up. The second thing that you want to do is you want to keep your paddle out in front. Okay. Up and out in front is a lethal combination. Do you want to stand here and demonstrate for me? And also, let's too remember, when you're at the kitchen, you just made the distance between you and your opponent so much shorter, so that takes away more time. When you're back in transition, you're back at the baseline, you can take a backswing, you have time, but up here, you literally have no time. Yes. So again, stand here. So, straight beginner, afraid of balls is what? Their paddle's down, very right position. Or they hit the shot and then their paddle drops. Then they go down. So you always want to make sure that you're here. The great tip that I like to use for all beginner intermediate players is what? The Beyonce tip. Put a ring on it, right? I put a ring on you, very hard, right? Once you're done, you hate when I do this tip, but once you're done, you dink or whatever you do, and then you make sure your hand touches your opposite hand. So you're always keeping this hand up like you're going to put a ring on it, right? So you're going to dink, and again, you're going to have your non-dominant hand touch the paddle every single time. That's going to ensure you're here. Now, here's what separates intermediate from advanced players. So intermediate players keep their paddle here, and then when the ball comes, what do they do? They go out to the ball and they lean. So let me take the ball from you, okay? She's here right now, right? The ball's coming. She's going out to the ball, and here we are, okay? Reactive, not proactive. The advanced players are going to what? start with their paddle up and out front, keep their paddle out so now when the ball comes they're already out to it proactive not reactive so that's a big difference a lot of players they start including myself because tennis you want to keep your uh your racket close to your body so you can take your paddle or your racket back i'm saying paddle now more than racket that shows my addiction to pickleball i think but again you want to make sure that you keep your paddle all the way out so you can go out the ball rather than have to go to it so let's show them that right now Let's do what a beginner does, okay? Here we are, so we don't have many balls left. Here we are, so you go dink, put your paddle down, and then they have that ball, and they got them, okay? Now, an intermediate player, they're gonna dink, now she's gonna take it out there, she goes out to the ball. Okay, that's good, but you're not set, you're not there. Now, advanced players, what? You're gonna keep your paddle out once you're done, and now, what can you do? Good. And already go out to it. So you kind of want to think at all times you keep your paddle out. And another thing that you can do as well is make sure it always follows your opponent to paddle tip. Notice my paddle tip is always following to where I want to hit a ball. Another good thing, I actually saw Tanner do this. Amazing uh, pickleball coach. Is he said you always want your paddle to like judge the distance that you can hit. So like when we're on the bag at Metabolic, we use our arm's length to like size up where we can throw the punch. Now for pickleball, you can keep your paddle tip fully extended and that's going to help you size up which ball you can take out of the air. So what I mean by that is if I keep my paddle tip here, I know where I can go. Anything outside of paddle tip, what am I going to do? Let, Let the ball bounce. So again, you can use your paddle tip to size up as well. Another tip that I can give too for people that are still like transitioning from like beginner I got, I guess I was like an intermediate player at the time, is a cheap backhand too, remember? Mm -hmm. They taught me that because um, I was constantly getting body bags. I had no hands at all. And they were like, well, if you just cheat backhand a little bit more because most of your
your blocks are going to be in a backhand position. Guys, 80% of your volleys are going to be backhand. So you think ready position, you think straight ahead, but maybe just cheat a little bit backhand so you're already there. Because look, she's a right hand player. The only time that she wants to take is forehand is when the ball's all the way out here. Anywhere else is always going to be a backhand. It's not going to be a forehand. That's super hard. You automatically want the default backhand. Even if the ball's over here, it's still going to be a backhand. The only time you hit a forehand is when the ball's all the way out there. A tip of mine, though, I'm an advanced player now, is I love, when I'm playing this side, I love to create space and take it as a forehand. Um, yes. Just because my forehand's so much stronger than my backhand, but you can only do that if you have time. Yeah. Time is fine. Are there any other tips that we want to share? About popping the ball up? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have to practice on it so you can get the reps so you can know when you're in a match when to take the ball out of the air and when to let it bounce. And what are the best drills for that? I just like to, again, like we said, the most used drill on the internet is get the ball out of the air if it's behind you. That's a good one. The next one that I like to do personally is just take the ball as early as possible every single time. So regardless of what shot you hit, anything, try to take every single ball out of the air and don't let it drop. I think another good drill too would be when you're dinking or you're warming up, if you don't throw, whatever it is, commit to not moving those feet behind that line. You can yeah. move t side to side, but you do not step back. Every time you step back, you lose the point. I agree. And then you're, you're throwing yourself into the fire. I don't care if Ben Johns is across from you, you're going to stand there and you're going to kick the ball back because you're not going to step back. Yeah, pretend that there's a wall or something behind no, you. No, you lose a point. You step back, you lose a point. I don't care what the shot is. Step back, you lose a point. I like that. A lot, actually. It's a really good one. You want to do it? Yeah, actually, let's go. One for three. <laughs> Step back, lose the point. Lose a point. A point. Okay, here we are. And you can be as aggressive as you need to be. Congratulations, great job today. Guys. But honestly, in like how many shots did we just take there? 10, 15 shots? Yeah. I felt so confident and strong. Like, I don't ever hit a dink like this. Yeah. That was a great dink I hit back to you because I'm like, Forcing can't yourself move to do back. So. Yeah, and that's and the thing. And then you realize, oh my God, I can do it. It's like that brain explosion emoji right now. Yeah, and I feel like many players, they end up missing or not hitting like that shot you don't really know that you had because yeah. they're second guessing themselves. If yes. you give yourself the only option to do something, yeah. it's going to help. And that's another thing just in your overall pickleball game is to just always go with your first instinct. Right. Because time is not a currency of pickleball, like you said. We said that three times in this video. But you don't know you can hit that good of a shot because you second guess and you think about it and then you try to attempt it. That was actually something I meant to say very early on in this video and then I got distracted and forgot. But I feel like one of the most important components in making this a great shot taking the ball of the air and making that a great shot is to make the decision like still so many players I play with 5 women every week and so many of us are still like I could read their mind that they're thinking about doing one thing or maybe doing the other thing take it out of the air like or let it bounce or should I do this do that the second you question yourself I it's mean, over you could get lucky but like you don't want to you don't want to do that yeah so commit to taking that ball out there and the, the easiest way that you can be able to make that commitment is to have the reps of practicing like you just did. Yeah. And, f and for me, I don't come from a racket sport. I come from physical contact sports. So like playing basketball and lacrosse and things like that. Like if I'm in a fight or flight, like I will can get physical against a person. You cannot get physical in here. It's all on your paddle. So if you can get that out of your brain and just start to learn, don't move off the kitchen is your way of being physical against your opponents. 
and maybe that's why my brain just works different than yours. Yeah, I love it. Just real life. So once again, guys, this video, if you watch this whole video, we hope, again, don't move back while taking the balls out of the air. Don't move back in general unless someone lobs the ball up at you. Yeah. And you have to run back or your opponent's absolutely going to kill the ball at you. If you can make that conscious effort to just stay up at the kitchen, you're going to win two times as many points if you don't already do so, as well as take the balls as early as possible. And again, think, do that drill that you can't take a step back or you lose a point. That's going to play a big difference. And get that confidence that you can stand up there and hide. It's all about confidence. And even if someone's going to start a firefight with you, stepping back, I don't know if that's even the answer either. In a firefight, because if no, they're going to get you. It's going to get you You just have to stand and you just have to keep, you just have to lean keep into it and do better. Just like we said, yeah. And go for it. So if you guys liked this video, make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, comment below, let us know what you think. If you guys have any other good tips, make sure to follow myself, The Pickle Yogi and everyone else on IG. Links in the description. If you want any type of pickleball program in your area, make sure you click the link in the description, fill out the form, and Universal Rackets represented will get out to you. Have a good one. Happy hitting. Make sure to click the link in the description for any type of self-hurt gear. So many new paddles Gift out. card with your purchase. So many new paddles. New so ways. many new outfits. So many new cool hats. Everything. Gift card with your purchase. Yeah. Use our promo code ADV-Universal. Once again, ADV-Universal. And we will see you guys next time on course.